I'm in Nairobi and we just got here maybe about an hour ago. I've been uploading things to my social media because I was out in Masai Mara um, for the last three days safariing. So we're just getting back to the city, which means I'm just getting um, access to like my data because it was super slow out there because it literally is the sticks. Um, we're in the Kahama Hotel, which is in Westlands, uh, Nairobi, and I have a really cute little room. I'm really happy with it. Okay, so this is it. I have closet, and then bed, nice double bed, um, little desk space, which I desperately need, and a TV. And then a tiny, tiny bathroom with a shower and a water heater. Muy importante. So I am very happy with it. I'm super excited to kind of sit down and like get some things done, um, get a little rest. We're going to go to dinner. But Masai Mara was dope. So dope. Got to meet the Masai people, which was mind blown mind blown um so i'm feeling good tired from all the riding because it was super bumpy super bumpy like my tailbone hurt so bad for the last three days and now i'm back um but yeah i am very excited to be back in nairobi we're gonna do a few things here before heading out to kasumu deuces <laughs> Good morning guys, we are at the Sheldrake Wildlife Trust. Um, we're doing the elephant orphanage first. Now if you decide to do the elephant orphanage, the viewing time is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Just an hour, you're going to want to get here early. We got here around 10 and shortly after we pulled up, people started, you know, making their way in and parking also the earlier you get there the better parking space you get you can end up outside of the gate having to walk pretty far to get to where you need to be and once people start coming they also just like start lining up and getting in place so even if you are here first if you don't get out the car until close to 11 you can still be out of luck um so we're gonna go in and watch them feed the elephants. They're from, you know, small baby elephants up to like three years. And these are elephants that have been saved and orphaned and they're trying to um, rehabilitate them to release them back into the wild. All right, other things to note, as you can see, like people are starting to line up um, because you have to pay to get in. It's 500 shillings to enter the elephant orphanage and like I said when you get here you're gonna have to get in line because it's a little before 10 30 and the amount of people has just grown exponentially and now they're starting to move their way to the front of the line so that they can get in first so things to know see y'all folks are like rushing to go pay Julius got us hooked up with the front row seats. <laughs> he knows where he's going. Y'all, I'm bugging out. This is so cool. Okay, we just finished with the elephant um, orphanage. What y'all think? <laughs> we learned a whole lot. They give a really good sort of lecture about how they care for the elephants and all that good stuff. So that was really cool. The nice thing about traveling with other content creators is that you have somebody that can help you get the shot. <laughs> because it's really hard to shoot by yourself or with someone that doesn't do pictures very often. Like they just do regular pictures because you have a vision and then it doesn't always get captured you'll end up with you know a photo that looks kind of like this 
but you know, travel life. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so, a few things you should know if you want to do a little, try a little bit of Swahili. Jumbo is hello. Um, Asante is thank you, and Karibu is you are welcome. It costs ten dollars to get into the giraffe centers, and you can feed the giraffes. The excitement. Okay. Thank you. So you don't have to pay to get the food. It comes with your interest, and you feed these to the giraffes, and they suggest you do it one pellet at a time. You excited? Oh, there you go. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Right now we're in the Kenyan Cultural Center. We're at the Bomas, which is um, means homestead in Swahili. And these, what it shows is the historical cultural um, societies that some of the villages in live, some of the villagers lived in. Um, there are 47, 42. There are there are 42 tribes in Kenya total. There are 23 displays, and they're displaying the different um, societies, how they built their homes and set them up. Right now, we're standing in the middle of the Mejikindi, which are coastal peoples. They are in what is now Mombasa, um, but they live on the outskirts. We were being told, so they live in these like it looks like straw huts, um, which is really cool. Rain, good. Yeah, it's supposed the rain. If it's done nicely well, because this is now like uh, all what is done nicely, the rain water don't go through. You see, like here, it can't leak. And this That's the, really This cool. is the bed for the, the second wife. Mm. But it's not like this. It should be big enough. Mm -hmm. But what they do, they put the, the hide on top of it. I was about to say, do they like cushion it with maybe straw or something? Yeah, just cow hide. Just cow hide. Yes. <laughs> We're standing in the second wife's house. Um, the second wife's house is not as big as the first wife's house because the first wife, of course, is the favorite. So lesson to you, always be the first wife. We just looked at the, the Curios um, homes. It's really interesting because these are um, sort of Southwest, Kenyan tribes, the they are like distant cousins, very similar to the Luo. The houses are constructed in a similar way out of soil and cow dung, and then the, it has the straw thatched roofs. What I found was fascinating, though, is that the they had these straw structures, um, straw and wood structures that are called granaries, and each family has a granary so like the first wife and the second wife or however have a granary and it's like a pantry that's where they keep all of the food that they store during harvest season in case of drought and they guard that mug what you cannot see um with the curio um homes is that they have doors so like they create these doors that lock from the inside and it has a little hole um in their huts that is like a people but also it lets the smoke out when they are you know cooking less the ventilation and all that good stuff fascinating with the cow dung with the huts they um keep it cool or warm depending on the climate which is really really fascinating mm -hmm. 